Well, almost 600 forest fires remain burning in British Columbia and more dry weather is in the forecast. The crisis has placed thousands under either evacuation orders or evacuation alerts. Yesterday, people in areas in and around Kimberley were told to be ready to leave on short notice. The CBC's Alison Dempster reports from Kimberley, B.C. It looks like firefighters have caught a break here. Winds have died down, temperatures have cooled, and fire officials say the fire burning about 25 kilometers from here has settled down. They are optimistic they can keep it in check. Now, as you can imagine, it's a great relief to people in town. People in Kimberley yesterday woke up to thick smoke and ash that had blown in from the wildfire. Now it's called the Meachin Creek Fire and it's about 6,000 hectares in size. So when winds picked up and the fire's behavior changed, city officials decided they'd better put emergency measures in motion. The mayor says he'd rather be safe than sorry. Now it appears Mother Nature is cooperating. Still, 4,500 Kimberley residents have been asked to pack their essentials and prepare for the worst case scenario. And 65 properties southwest of the city in the St. Mary Lake area have been evacuated. All right, and for a closer look at the other wildfire activity threatening much of British Columbia, let's bring in Laura McQuillan. Laura, what's the latest? Just a short time ago, actually, we got another evacuation order that came out from uh, authorities in BC. That one affects Germanson Landing in the central interior and 27 properties. The residents there have been told to get out immediately because of the fire danger. So that's just been coming out in the past hour or so. Right across the province now, 566 active fires. We can show you some of the major fires and also the biggest. It's at Shovel Lake and it's continuing to spread. It's marked there and it's northwest of Kimberley where Allison is. Now this fire, Shovel Lake fire west of Prince George is now nearly as big as New York City. That gives you an idea of just how much land this intense fire has burned through. 320 properties have been ordered to evacuate because of this fire and about 940 others are on standby. They might have to leave at a moment's notice. And it's not just homes that are under threat, but also history. We're keeping an eye on what's happening in Fort St. James. There, there is a National Historic Site. It has these 130-year-old wooden buildings. And actually, authorities there, park officials, have been installing fire sprinklers on the roofs of these buildings to try and protect them from any embers that are coming from the flames. Right across BC, all of that smoke is really creating a hazard in the air. The air quality has been uh, very risky across the province. On a scale from 1 to 10, several places right up the Okanagan and through the central interior measuring a 10 plus. That's on a scale from 1 to 10. So it shows you the hazards that people are facing right across BC, whether that's air quality or the fires. Lots of people on standby right now to see if they might have to clear out next, Arthur. And as the fires continue to rage, concern is mounting for residual smoke and declining air quality. So for more on that, I'm joined by Sarah Henderson, and she's an environmental health scientist with the BC Centre for Disease Control. She joins us now from North York, Ontario. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me, Arthi. So first, let's start with the fact, I mean, you've been studying this for about 15 years now, the health effects uh, of these air quality concerns. What is the biggest health concern with the wildfires in BC right now? So the biggest health concern is always for people who have pre-existing respiratory conditions, such as asthma or COPD. This smoke is very irritating for those people, and they might have more exacerbations of their conditions and potentially more severe exacerbations of their conditions. After that, anybody else with any kind of pre-existing illness uh, is going to be at higher risk, along as pregnant women, infants, children, and the elderly. And of course, we know uh, also based on what you've studied that certainly there is the potential here for short term and long term impacts because of that air quality. So let's start with the short term health impacts. What can people do right now to prevent those? So the number one thing that people can do is to run an uh, air cleaner, a portable air cleaner in their home, usually use in HEPA filtration. These units uh, sit in one room of the home. They can usually keep one or two rooms quite clean. They're very effective and they can make the indoor environment far more comfortable for you and your family. And so that's the short term, but let's talk about the long term, particularly because th we know that these are ongoing situations that occur in British Columbia and they have been getting worse. Uh, this is, I think, the fourth worst on record right now. So when it's long term health concerns, give us some details about that. 
Okay, so this is a little bit challenging to understand, but when we talk about the health effects of air pollution, we usually talk about the long-term health effects and then the, the health effects of short-term fluctuations. About 80% of the burden of disease associated with air pollution is really what you're exposed to year after year after year. And as we see more and more wildfire, what we're going to see is, is higher and higher long-term concentrations of pollutions like fine particulate matter across Canada because of these wildfires. And, and what that will do is, is slightly increase the incidence of diseases like heart disease, asthma, and, and, and lung cancer within the population. So this is, this is you know, these things are, are very serious when they happen because the air quality is so degraded over a short period, but they actually have long-term effects for the population as well. So you say year after year, certainly that can add to the problem, compound the problem, really. So when we're talking about long term, we addressed what people can do in the short term. But moving forward, what can we do to alleviate the potential long term impacts of these fires? So it's all about being prepared and so much about of it is about keeping the indoor environment as clean as possible. We can't do much about air pollution outdoors, but most of us spend up to 90% of our time indoors, so we really have to focus on keeping the indoor environment clean even when it's really smoky outside. And that means preparation um, at the individual level and preparation at the societal level.